In this video, we will be talking about the common fluid types. If the rate of deformation or shear rate is proportional to the velocity profile, this type of fluid is called Newtonian fluid. For Newtonian fluid, shear stress can be expressed by a linear relation. For non-Newtonian fluid, the relationship between shear stress and the rate of deformation or shear rate is not linear. The slope of this curve between the shear stress and shear rate is apparent viscosity. Some examples of Newtonian fluids include water, organic solvents and honey. For those fluids, viscosity is only dependent on temperature. Non-Newtonian fluids can be divided into two broad categories on the basis of their shear stress and shear rate behavior. That are Shear stress is independent of time or duration of shear, time independent. Shear stress is dependent on time or duration of shear, time dependent. You can probably guess that non-Newtonian fluids are the opposite of Newtonian fluids. When shear is applied to non-Newtonian fluids, the viscosity of the fluid changes. They can be classified as pseudoplastic fluids, or shear thinning fluids. When the shear force on the fluid is increased, the apparent viscosity decreases. Engine oil is an example to this fluid type. Dilatant fluids or shear thickening fluids. For these fluids, when the shear force on the fluid increases, the apparent viscosity increases. Quicksand, for instance. Then, Bingham plastic is the fluid appears solid up to a particular stress and the after increasing the stress further, there will be shear deformation. Toothpaste is an example to this. The ability to obtain good quality physical properties, such as viscosity, from experimental results or correlations is an important aspect of engineering science. The study of fluid flow is called rheology. A plot of shear stress versus shear rate is known as a rheogram or, alternatively, the study of a fluid's rheological properties. The instrument used to study the variation in shear stress with shear rate is called a rheometer or, more commonly, a viscometer. That brings us to the end of this lesson. In our next session, we will talk about one of the main fluid properties, Reynolds number and flow regimes in more detail. See you in the next video!